right, welcome everybody. Paul Trani here, the one and only Natalie Lou. Good to have you here. Thank you. Yes. It's good to be here. She's creative resident, more importantly, an interaction designer that does many things. She's out of all our residents. I feel like you're always like, you're always like doing stuff. You're always like on the go, and probably one of the fastest typers I've sat next to. I, I am really, really fast at typing. Yeah, there so. should be a typing part of the residency. <laughs> so yeah, give Natalie a warm welcome. It's I guess technically is your first time on like uh, one of these like three day streams. It is yes. So this is good. Exciting for me. Good to have you here. Give her yeah. a warm welcome. We're also interested in you, of course. Voodoo Val in the house. Good to see you, Hugo. Let us know where you're from. Looks like. We got a hello from Canada. I don't know if you can tell us where you flew in from. Yeah, I flew in from, I live in Brooklyn. So I, I live in New York and came in. Yeah, woot woot, Brooklyn. Yeah, I Brooklyn. Am, yeah, and got out here. Now I'm in San and Francisco. Not that you've been there for too long, but you used to live in what, Seattle, the Seattle yeah. area? So I, I just like graduated. Red yeah, so I just graduated from the University of Washington in Seattle and moved out to New York with aspirational dreams of becoming a cool arty UX designer and trying to live that out. <laughs> I love it. That's that's what we're all trying to do. It's just like, I feel like we're all just trying to be a little, I'm trying to be a little bit cooler than I actually am. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, it's and true. that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so it's good to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Going yeah. coast to coast and back. We have her in San Francisco, which is where we're from. We got Morocco in the house, Syracuse, Nepal. Rabin, welcome from Nepal. That's awesome. That is cool. I don't Never know. Never been there we've... before. Yeah, and I would totally go there. And okay. Ukraine. Do you have a place that you've wanted to, would like to go to if you can go anywhere in the world? You know, I really want to go to Japan is okay. one of the places and I also really want to go to Iceland. Have you ever Iceland that was like cool. a big thing recently that like people go on these cool trips where they like drive around Iceland and take cool photos and one of the residents does that and so I'm always like trying to live in her footsteps yes. in my mind but yeah. couldn't take nearly as cool photos. Yeah, and I think for uh, a lot of times photographers that is a destination for them. Like no you would doubt. have to take up like photography if you're going to go to Iceland. Yeah, exactly, is, I know. And Japan as well, so that's iPhoneography for me. Oh, iPhoneography. I like it. So if you're from Japan, I'd love to see. Actually, I wonder how late it is in Japan. That's coming. Ah, uh, gosh, I have no idea. It's what like time tomorrow. It is. It's probably they're always they, <laughs> they're they're in the future, yeah. literally and like figuratively most of the time in Japan. So Germany in the house. It's cool. We got some cool things going on. Uh, Natalie, welcome. Thank you. We get to you for two hours, which is fantastic. I don't know where you want to begin. Like, yeah. um, we're welcoming everybody right now. We can talk about the residency. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, totally. You wanna... Be happy to talk about the residency. I am just so everybody knows the residency applications opened yesterday. Um, it's pretty exciting. Yep. So yes. uh, people can apply. You can apply from the US, from Canada from um, Germany and newly from the UK. So if you live anywhere in the UK, you can apply. We're looking for people that are early stage career people. So mm -hmm. that basically means like working, oh. <laughs> work, <laughs> I am working, you know, you don't wanna be someone that um, is in school because it's like a full-time gig. Um, but we also don't want people that have been like doing this really professionally for 15 years. We want people that are early stage career. So whatever that means to you, if you think you fit that description, um, that's a, a really good opportunity for you. I am in the residency for for those of you that don't know, is Adobe sponsors um, a couple people every year to work on a creative passion project and then share it with the online creative community, our online creative community. So on Twitter, um, on our websites, on Instagram, wherever we can reach people, we're sharing our work and we're also speaking at creative jams, which Paul yeah. usually joins me at. I've seen you and yeah, it's a lot of awesome times. Having you, having you there. Yeah, I am and at conferences like Max and 99U. Sometimes we'll do um, little workshops or we'll do um, lectures. And so it's a cool opportunity to just work on something for an entire year that you're excited about. Um, so it's kind of a dream come, come true. You're sponsored all year, so you get a full salary and health benefits. Um, so yeah, it's like having a full-time job where you work on what you wanna work on. So it's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. I, yeah, we could 
yeah, we could talk all day long about this. It is really fascinating. I think it was really encouraging that you said that like you're not looking for the, the best in their career. Like the top in their career is not what we're necessarily looking for. It's the sort of the people who have a maybe even have a vision of what they want what would they would want to do over the course of the next year. Yeah. But still have some education under their belt uh, to make it happen. Yeah, and the other thing is when you apply for the residency, you like have a proposal that you're saying, here's what I would want to do in a year. And one of the big parts of the application is sharing sharing your work and sharing what you've done before. And uh, that's kind of the critical piece in, in applying and getting the residency is making sure that what you're proposing to do aligns with some of the work that you've already been doing, right? Like if you're applying as a UX designer, which I am, you wanna make sure that you've shown some UX design work that relates to the kind of proposal that you're you're pitching to us. So mm -hmm. having some background in it, but not being like a well-versed 15 year professional in UX design, it's right in that kind of, that middle ground of early stage career. Yeah, that's really cool. So, and uh, so yeah, just I'm, we just basically have the uh, the application up right now. We have that link posted uh, that talks about the residency. There's a link to FAQ to this application. I just encourage you because I was trying to track what you were saying with the actual application. So these are all the boxes you need to check. Like if you're thinking, is it for me and me? You know, sort of, is it does it have to deal with my discipline? You can see a list right here, and you can even check other. Yeah. I don't know what and that would be. We're, we're definitely looking be for 3D. We're definitely looking know. for UX designers. Um, so if you're in UX design, early stage career, that's a super exciting place to be for the residency because you get to work on a project that you're excited about all year. And someone asks if you have to relocate. Man. No, you get to live wherever you want. I mean, if you want to stay at home, we have people that work out of their homes in Erie, Pennsylvania, in Louisville, Kentucky. I live in Brooklyn. Um, another resident also lives in Brooklyn. So you can be wherever. And the thing about the residency that's cool is you could stay in your home or you could also decide to move somewhere different because you get yeah. sponsored to move wherever. You don't have to work yeah. out of an office. So it's a cool opportunity also to check out some new places. I know that Craig Winslow, who was a resident last year, he moved to Portland, Oregon, just because the residency could kind of help get him there and uh, start his mm -hmm. career out in Portland. So it's a great opportunity to and, do that. Uh, which is also what you did as well. I mean, you said, hey, you know, you initially, what, you started out as a resident and you were in Washington. So yeah. I don't know, Redmond, Seattle area. Yeah, I was right living in, in Seattle and, and it was just great to be able you to. You said, hey, let's not only get this new residency, but also this is an opportunity to move kind of too and get to meet people. And it put you in a, it put you in a good place too to kind of run into other people and oh, potentially yeah. work with other people. Oh yeah. But I must say, like and we can talk more about this and we'll get to designing as well um, it's kind of a th it's I, I I think it sounds really awesome but we'll, we'll I'd like to talk to you more more over the course of the next hour and a half because I think it's more difficult than you realize when you get you, you wake up some days and you don't have somebody like a boss breathing down your neck necessarily. You yeah. are your own boss. Yeah. So it takes a certain type of person to do it. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. It's a specific yeah, type most, of person. Most yeah. people need to be managed. So. Yeah. You know, the residency is awesome because you work on whatever you want. And also it's incredibly oh. hard because you work on whatever you want. Sam, that's a great question. Does Adobe, does Adobe own the work created during the residency? Yes. Or no, no. I, I own it. So it's yeah. my work. Um, I have ownership over it. So it's another really awesome part of it. Yeah. Um, so the residents have ownership. And, and provided like we're still like, hey, you know what? You're working on this project. We want to have you go speak at a, you know, creative jam or two or five or whatever. <laughs> but like we whatever you're working, we still we're not just, you know, we want you to show off your work over the course of the next year. So you're not necessarily working in a bubble like if that makes sense. You're, we won't, yeah. You know. Honestly, I was trying to think of the angle that Adobe has, and there's really no angle. You know what I'm saying? What you I, You know, it's like, we don't ask you to go and do a Photoshop workshop. Oh, no, no, no. You know? <laughs> well, there's like no outright deliverables where it's like, well, you know, because you're a resident now, you got to be in 20 ads that Adobe does, right? It's all about... And all it does is give you exposure. Hey, you want to talk about something? Yeah. We could, we could highlight you in this article exactly. if whatever you want to talk about. And it's not like you know, we'll, we'll give you exposure, but you're not getting paid. It's like all the while we're getting paid. We're getting a lot of exposure, um, traveling all over the place at these like cool mm -hmm. conferences and cool creative jams. 
I did one recently in Nashville, and I'd never been there, and that was just oh, a great opportunity to go check out Nashville. So yeah, lots of awesome exposure opportunities. Yeah, and that's our whole goal. Is like we want to learn like through you and through the residents is what we try to do because it's yeah. not easy, and that's even what we try to do on this live stream. Is like it's just free knowledge of people working in their careers, whether it's UX, UI. And next week will be something else. I'm not sure what next week is. I can check with the team. Uh, but that's the whole idea is just like showing people their process, you know, yeah. and highlighting them. And yours, by the way, because we do have a contest going on. Just like click through a couple things. Uh, challenge right here. Challenge tab, as you can see, scrolling down. Thank you, everybody, for submitting apps who has today so far. But we also have um, uh, basically the challenge is all about health. So it could be anything, monitoring your heart rate. It could be made up technology. I like the idea of kind of like a made up thing. Well, that's know. that's kind of, I mean, to segue into my work. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's do so it. that's can. kind of my uh, my area of focus. What I do is thinking about how um, future, near future technologies um, can play into um, social good work. So what I work on is um, considering how we can make UX design a channel for social impact. And do you really um, work that fast though? Yeah, I'm that's like me. Just thoroughly full impressed. On that's, just, working. that's just real time. Yeah, that's real that's time. Not, not sped up at all. Yeah. So <laughs> this is my website. I am, and this year, what I've kind of been working on is thinking about how. UX design can be a, a channel for social impact in a, a bunch of different spaces. So I recently did a project that was all about thinking about professional networking and how we can make it more accessible for people who weren't like raised in opportunities where they were like abounding because of their family. Like lots of, I was thinking a lot about how we can make professional networking something that is in the hands of people on the go. So I worked on prototyping this, this kind of near future app that would be all about connecting with professionals on online kind of like tinder for networking uh -huh. i'm but it was all about making sure people got to meet each other and uh and i've recently been working with this charity called donor shoes which if you're unfamiliar with it it's a charity that's kind of like kickstarter for public school education and so a teacher will write a proposal and say hey you know we need 400 violins for our music classroom mm -hmm. and then a bunch of people will donate money directly through the charity to make sure that the teacher gets the 400 violins. So they know where it's going and then they get this nice little thank you at the end. And That's cool. what I worked on with them was thinking about how things like AI um, and kind of near future technologies could play into what they're doing. So I worked on this little like podcasting app that would allow mm. their teachers to tell stories that people could listen to and then they could donate through that. So that's kind of what I'm gonna be working on today is Ooh. sharing that and sharing. Would, yeah. Yeah. I would love to. I would love to see it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Totally. I don't know if you're ready. I mean, I know we're on oh, my no. screen now. Yeah, uh, no, what, I'm ready. I am. Yeah. It sounds awesome, and I love it. It's the whole idea of what is that charity where you can give micro loans? Yeah. Um, out, and I can't remember the name of it, but essentially Kiva. that's Kiva. Thank you. Yeah. That's so cool. Just like I, oh, these people need violins. Let me donate to that specific cause. Yeah. Really so cool. they're an awesome charity, and the cool thing about them is they're really built out. They have got a full product team. So when I went in and worked th with them a little bit, it wasn't like they were like, oh, we need you to build a Squarespace site. I was really able to um, work with them and thinking about kind of future work. And so I built out this um, podcasting app so that teachers could um, share their stories. And then what I'm gonna be working on today is sharing how people would be able to listen on a platform like Spotify to these kind of podcasts and then be able to donate internally through something like Spotify, right? So this is what I'm gonna be working on on this live stream for the next couple of days is building out how existing platforms like Spotify and I don't know if anyone's familiar with HQ Trivia. I'm a pretty avid player of this new trivia game. Do you, do you play oh, that? Oh, I- It's like an I've, app. Oh, I love, it's blowing up. Yeah, it's blowing up, yeah, so- I'm HQ gonna, Trivia. Yeah, so- It's gonna, live every day at noon? Mm -hmm, well, or yeah, it's so funny, whatever. like on East Coast time, I'm like, it's three. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they go live at three and nine um, East Coast time. And uh, it's a really fun thing where people like all play trivia at the same time. And my goal in this live stream is going to be like, what if you were listening to and playing HQ Trivia? And they did this question that was like, which one of these animals recently got out of extinction? And you choose the right answer or you choose the wrong answer or whatever, but then you could donate 25 cents during that to um, to like the World Wildlife mm -hmm. Fund. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about yeah. is how you can modify existing platforms to show cool ideas. 
That is cool. Yeah. So Col Colleen's wondering if you're a designer, you do, do you code as well? Yeah, so um, I do a little bit of coding. Like I'm familiar with like CSS and HTML and a little bit of Java, but that's, that's not really my expertise. Like I consider myself more of like a strictly designer designer, um, but I also like mm -hmm. to do some stuff that's like fun prototyping on stuff like processing and Arduinos and yeah. use kind of like robots sometimes, so. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like robots. I have to just cause I want them to be my friend when they take over, basically. It's so. not a bad reason. <laughs> I'm gonna be like a robot's pet like, you know, the robots have taken <laughs> over and I'm just like, they find me amusing how I do math or something. Yeah. That's my hope to be just like some little lap, yeah. lap pet of, a, of, a, of a, a robot. Is that a thing? Anyways, I can Maybe. leave it up to me, get us off track. But no, this is cool. And I think you're in good company because we all have lots of fantastic designers and uh, who, who will hopefully be participating in the challenge. Just one way to win, win Creative Cloud, uh, but happy to have you here. It did go quiet. Matthias was like, hey, did everybody just like go to fill out an application just now <laughs> when we were talking God, about yeah. cuz chat got a little quiet. <laughs> yeah. Stay with us. Also, this is where you're going to hear all of her tips and her insight about being a resident over the course of 3 days cuz we each for 3 days, which is awesome. I mean, and the other thing is, I mean, if you are doing one of these applications and proposals for the residency, you want to make sure you spend enough time on it. Like that's something where Check out all of the requirements, but make sure you're like really dedicated, spending time, yeah. filling it out. And also like, if you have a proposal idea, what you should do is like, think on it, write up a little thing, sleep on it, spend a few days, ask your friends, talk to your family, mm -hmm. right? Like make sure that this idea comes from you and is like solid in what you're working on. Because what you don't want to do is say, hey, I want to work on this random thing I just thought of. Yeah. I have no work that shares it off, right? Like you want to make sure that it's something that you know and you want to do for an entire year. Yeah, and if you think about it from, say, your manager's perspective, they don't want to have to. Let's be honest, like they don't want to have to babysit you through the whole pro for through the course of a year. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like if you have, the clearer your idea is, totally. I think the better off. It just it's going to make them feel better and uh, totally. Like, Hopefully help your chances. And the other thing about the residency, like you said, is that there's not a lot of babying. So it's like very self-driven, self-initiated. And that thing that's like, it's kind of hard to be a resident because you have to I'm really saying. make sure that you're working on it all the time. Exactly. Um, you know, it's, it's important to know how to moderate yourself and how to work, mm -hmm. even though you have no specific deliverables from a boss or yeah. someone. So yeah, no, no, Paul, this isn't going to be just about the residency, but we had to talk to Natalie about it since she is a resident and it, the application has just opened up. Oh, imagine the coincidence there, actually. But no, we will be talking about the residency and working on this fun yes. project. Yes. So Let's check it out. And share what Spotify. I'm working on. Yeah. So, so here's what I'm going to be working on, thinking about how we can modify Spotify, modify Spotify, modify Spotify, modify Spotify <laughs> to be something where you could donate to an organization or maybe that's like, you know, you're listening to a podcast and you're interested in what they're talking about and you could donate money to that kind of research or that organization, right? Um, thinking about how that would work internally. So first, what, I, what I've shown mm -hmm. here is I've taken a bunch of screenshots of the existing Spotify stuff. So what I like to do is if I'm going to work on existing stuff, I want to basically just modify what, you know, is mm -hmm. already going on, on on the app. So here we can see like I'm straight already up working. Screenshots, right? Did you just these are, to do screenshots, right? Yeah, these are just straight up screenshots it's from that my. That you did at 7:49 p.m. Yeah, what day? <laughs> we don't know. Oh, what day? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. We don't know. Yeah. Verizon LTA. That was probably in Brooklyn somewhere. It or not. Been. Maybe not. <laughs> it might have been. Because I feel like AT and T horrible service really? in like Manhattan. Yeah. I just had oh, bad man. service, and yeah. I feel like I, I think Verizon does better in New York City, but yeah. I could be totally no. Wrong. The other day I was somewhere, and it was like it was so crowded there, I could not talk to anyone. I think it was also just in Manhattan. It's crazy. Mm. So what I'm gonna share here is I've got all of these um, screenshots that I've already put onto my uh, my 
XD file. And what I just do is I make an artboard and I put the screenshot on here and I'm gonna share a little bit how I modify existing screenshots. It's a great way, instead of like, you know, sometimes you wanna build out an app that's like about charity contributions, but is building out an app where people can spend money that won't go to something that they want, something that's like super profitable, probably not. Mm -hmm. So instead I like to modify existing things to make it a little bit more realistic. So here, what we're gonna start doing is saying, okay, so we've got my library. What would now probably what I would do is click into browse. And so I'm thinking about, okay, what if I, what should, what charity should we make up? What, oh. what we could, we could do anything today. What should we do? This is up to you. Now it's like, exciting. I think we should do like, uh, like, cause if you think about it, like, like maybe coats for animals. I'm just kidding. That's kind of That's a joke. That's kind of a sad charity, you know? Like, I mean, it's like, it's hey, have you ever seen animals one. out there in the wild? They don't have coats. They need coats. Coats for wild animals or something like that. I love that, like that. yeah. Well, I can't believe I didn't think of that earlier. <laughs> I'm just kind of messing with you. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, we can, We can, I think honestly like sort of clean water is a huge thing. Yeah. I think a charity water, um, yeah. but that's narrowing it. Yeah, well, I mean, specific. I'd be happy to. Ooh, give a, give a fi? Hey, give a Miriam, that's a great, Just that's just a great name. Is that a really, a real charity? I don't know, but I like totally want to write it down. Cause okay. it's like, give if we, if we might need a name for this, yeah. like, no, I don't, I, I really no. don't know. Okay, I don't so know. I don't know where it's going to go. Let's call it give a fi. Okay, give a fi. Um, Good job. Miriam. Let's call this charity Giveify. And, th and this organization is all about learning about other organizations where you can give money, okay? Okay. So that's what this organization is about. It's about oh, charity organization good. knowledge. That would be great. Like how much how much money goes to the cause versus admin? Yeah. Like that's one, yeah, that's and, one stat and that I'd want to know about. Is exactly. Okay? And maybe you could see like stuff like, okay, where, uh, like, what are the stories that they're telling about how their organization is playing in people's lives? Like you can read articles or whatever. So mm -hmm. we've got this whole built out idea for what the charity and so, or the organization. And so now let's start thinking about, okay, we're gonna build out a podcast for this charity, this organization, Giveify, okay? This is the Giveify podcast. So what I like to do is I go straight into what I'm, you know, the, the screenshot. And then let's let's work on seeing what that would look like. Okay, so I'm just modifying what's already out there. So I've maybe Giveify is, let's have Giveify be a gradient. And the gradient is this color. And it has like a little bit of a, sh a shadow. Okay, and now we're gonna Give Giveify their little title. Give a fi. Maybe it's in all caps, you know, because give a fi. Okay. And we're gonna give them a little a little lockup right here. Okay, so here is the charity give a fi. And uh, this is their let's let's say that this is their weekly podcast. Okay, so we've got Giveify and the weekly podcast. Let's just make it a little bit smaller. And so now what we're building out is sort of like what it would look like to open up this podcast. So already you're starting to get sort of like an idea of what it would be like to, to open this up and what it would be like to open it up existing within Spotify already, because this is something that people are doing all the time. I like it. Okay, all right. So let's just say this is what it looks like, I guess maybe. So Hannah Carlson, basically if you, you want to get the embed code, if you're gonna put your uh, submission on Behance. So use that embed code and then paste that into a project would be fantastic. And then once it's there, you can actually update it and it will update that URL. I like this podcast. Do you got a favorite podcast right now? Um, yeah, I like to listen to Recode Decode with Kara Swisher. I'm pretty into like 
thinking about ethical technology and Kara Swisher is sort of is like the the god of talking about that kind of stuff. Oh, nice. Recode decode. Recode decode. If you're not familiar, look it up. And you know what I like to do is what I'm doing here is I'm just matching it so we can get it to a color so that it looks like the text is blocking it out. That's pretty good. You know, it's like it doesn't have to be uh -huh. perfect to share your ideas. Um, I like it. And I think that's another big part of what I do is things don't have to be perfect to get the point across. The real point getting across is like doing research and um, a lot of work to make sure that um, what you're working on is something that's necessary, something that's gonna make positive contributions in people's lives. Um, so yeah, and I, I also can share a little bit about, um, oh, here it is. Oh, uh, no. Zeppelin, okay. Sorry, I just missed a comment. Um, first off, just if people are updating uh, XD, just make sure it should be XD 4.0 if you go in to look at the splash screen. So make sure I have the right version if you're having an issue. So here's a little bit about my process, just oh, what I was just talking about, right? So this is kind of what it looks like where I do a lot of like secondary research where I'm learning about a space and I'm looking up scope. If you're not familiar with this process, this is sort of is like, a lot of modifications, but the general UX process. You do secondary research, you learn about what your problem is. You do primary research, you ask people questions. You make sure that you're answering the right kind of questions and you're asking the right kind of questions to people, you're getting feedback. After all that, you're building insights and, and thinking about how you want to build out something. And then you start brainstorming and wireframing, which I'll show a little bit. So brainstorming is super critical and like- Kind of what we were just doing, even like brainstorming names. Yeah, and, and brainstorming- Thank you, Miriam. Can take a lot of can take a lot of different formats. Like what I like to do is I'll do something where I'll set a timer for five minutes, and then I will like fold up a piece of paper, uh, like a, a eight and a half by eleven, and then what I'll do is I'll set the timer on for five minutes, and I'll have to come up with eight ideas. So front and back side of a folded up piece of eight and a half by eleven. Okay. And I have to come up with eight ideas about what I'm working on. They don't have to be good ideas, but they just have to be ideas out there. Yeah. Because when you give yourself constraints way easier to brainstorm so exactly love brainstorming i am and then wireframing and then i do low low fidelity work do mm -hmm. a lot of testing of prototypes which is great in xd right because you can send it right to your phone so there's not like that weird thing where you're having people try to test it on like your computer or like do paper prototyping mm -hmm. and never and stopping there having it on your phone directly making modifications mm -hmm. just uploads right to your phone super super important and really great yeah. um so able to do that with xd which is awesome um yeah. and then yeah building out high fidelity and, and sharing a project yeah that's, kind that's of our good process. And, and i think that's the whole goal even like we say hey you can win you know creative cloud all the at the end of the day we just we're, we just want people to just try stuff kind of like again whether you're brainstorming try wireframe try all these things that you just said but at least just like do something even if it is you know, potentially winning a notebook, you know, and, you know, writing down all your ideas, like you said here, which was really good. Totally. And uh, while you're in your comfy socks, because we're giving yes. these away, by the way. Socks. Is, we're going to give away. This is like a I little package deal. I love that. That's so great. <laughs> so uh, this will be in uh, about 30 minutes. We'll just do a random giveaway just because we can. And uh, we like you. We like you, Martin. So how do you approach research if it's a confidential project? Typically you get one of those things that like Men in Black that will like zap their memory once you have them do the little demo. That's what I get. I am, um, yeah, I mean, a confidential project, like no matter if that's just like you working on something or is like a big company, what they'll let you do is do lots of interviews with people that then sign an NDA that are like, hey, you know, don't talk about this project mm -hmm. we're doing, but you get research and you, I mean, if you're a participant, NDA. usually you get like a hundred bucks to just participate and stuff. So if you ever see something that's like, Google is looking for people mm -hmm. that um, like to eat snacks at midnight. Would you come at 11, at you know 1 p.m. on Saturday at this location? We'll pay you mm -hmm. in a $50 Amazon gift card. Like that's a lot of the way that they get people to Snacks at midnight. It. You get, you get you research just named rewards. everyone. I know. Well, <laughs> I, I love it. I don't no, I love it. Snacks at midnight? Yeah, that's my demo. I'm that's right funny. there. Oh. <laughs> but that's a good, so two, two things on that. One is you might not be the demographic. And then two, like even if you're doing like a focus group, like I think sometimes if you're 
there's certain people that sign up for focus groups. So even if you're going through a company that does focus, like, that, don't you think that's like a thing? Yeah. Like there's certain people that do focus groups. Yeah. I'm not that guy. It might not be the per your friend yeah. or the person you pull on off the street. Yeah. Does that make sense? Well, what I was also going to say is that like with the residency, something that is like good and hard is you have to learn how to do all the steps yourself, right? Because yeah. you don't, you're not working with a UX researcher and a dev person and, you know, like a PM. It's just you. So what mm -hmm. I really learned how to do is like how to get people that are research participants in the first place. Really great way is like Google Forms. Have everyone you know yeah. post on Facebook this Google Form that's like, yeah. I'm looking for these people. I can pay you in coffee. Especially the key to like what I have found the key to getting good research participants is just be deliberate and clear about what you're asking of them. Be like, I'm looking, I need a half an hour. I'll give you, you know, a $5 coffee, blah, blah, blah. Like usually you want to give them a little bit more than that. But if mm -hmm. you're a student low on resources, you know, the important thing is just being really clear about what your expectations for the research thing are. And uh, yeah, that's, that's a really important part of UX, not just the pretty apps, the pretty looking mm -hmm. things, but also doing the work to, to get to that idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is good. Well, I can keep so, working on stuff too. Yeah, continue working. Great. Chris, just like, if you could help me be more specific, because we're talking about proprietary ideas, obviously, sign an NDA. If, you're, if security is different than that, yeah. Right on. So if you are new, by the way, curious, just say hello. Be like, I'm new and I'm from here and it's midnight here and I am eating snacks because I wonder where it is. Uh, I wonder if it's midnight for someone somewhere out there. How many followers should it have on straight mill? Yeah, killing it. See, and what I'm doing is I'm just following along with the way that their current UI looks because that's a great way to sort of get your hands on working on, you know, UX projects without actually like having to start something from scratch. A lot of people think that in order to make like a UX project, you've got to start from scratch. It's just not true. It's a, a great way to learn is to modify things that are existing. I mean, obviously give credit mm -hmm. to them, but should, you know, work on something that also feels realistic. Yeah, and even if you're, like, this is something that's literally, like, sort of going to be baked into Spotify is what we're working on now. But I'd say even if you're working on, like, a, a photography-based app, you could do screenshots of Instagram and drop them in here. Totally. Just, just to be like, this is how people are, in a, like, using photography or photo apps. You know what totally, I'm saying? Totally, exactly. Like, you don't ever want to, that's typically what I do. Like, how do they, oh, there's a big button in the center for, you know, uploading or... Totally. Taking a photo. So, okay. So I've I've decided that this is the, the sort of like little screen of what it looks like, okay? So now I'm going into my particular podcast part. So I have clicked into this Giveify and now I'm seeing like the exact podcast um, title and I can make that a little Boom. bit smaller, right? Hello, Zuhair. Are you new here? Good to see you, my friend. Somebody said they're new and they're having snack, or they they like snacks, so that's good. Apparently, it's midnight in uh, Moscow Gee. and Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And that's so basically, crazy. like over that. Part I'm so of the glad world. that people are watching at midnight. You know. Yeah. Three oh three a.m. Shashank in India. That's crazy. Wow. We'll try to use our our nighttime voices. Yeah. Our nighttime, our nighttime radio voices. Wait, that's so funny. <laughs> All right, Not we're taking loud, you into yeah. the midnight hour now. It's true. Yeah. Be designing basically uh, an app allowing you to potentially yeah, donate directly from within Spotify with the one and only yeah, Natalie Lou. Yeah, there Lou. we go. That's pretty good. Okay. I like it. And so now, what? This ASMR the, voices. The name of it. So, you know, this is the. Can, did you know there's, there's podcasts that are all about uh, sleeping? Like you play them to go to sleep, and it's just it's one yeah. of them's called one of them's called Sleep with Me, and it's just a guy droning on about and typically he's watching Doctor Who, and he's just talking about this episode of Doctor Who, and he loves so you to sleep. 
Really? Yeah. Is it good? I love it. Really? It just, I have a big smile on my face when I listen to it. That's I'm so like, funny. this is so ridiculous. You know, and I'm totally into it. Honestly, though, sometimes I will listen to podcasts before I go to sleep because it's like, gotten so used to that kind of stuff. Always on the screen, you know? Late night Adobe ASMR. That makes me laugh. I'm. ASMR, is that what that's called, Voodoo Val? Do you know, did you know that? What? ASMR. I, no. I mean, I didn't, I had to Google it. Oh, you just did? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, you gotta refresh my memory. Yeah, what, I don't know what it stands for, but it's like, it is a phenomenon. Just a way to lull you to sleep. Autonomous sensory meridian response. We don't want you to fall asleep, actually, on this episode. That's not the goal. We want to use our inside voices if it is midnight there. That's not the goal. No, yeah, not at all. Okay. Uh, so oh, now. by the way, like, the latest update, and I know we do, like, it's just like, if, I kn you are working really fast, by the way, and I feel like you're only going to work faster. Me? Because we made, I think you work fast. Oh, that's you're nice. always, Thank like, you. clicking around so fast. Thanks. So we'll switch to my screen, if you don't mind. Just because somebody sent me this... This file, I'm like, okay, it just has a couple of uh, artboards. I don't know, just a couple. I don't know. Let's like zoom out a little bit. Let's zoom out a little bit more. And all I'm showing is like the performance because there happens to be 1500 artboards in this one file. And I can point to any one of these areas and kind of zoom right into it. So I think it's pretty impressive that we're constantly working on performance. It's pretty cool. That is pretty and cool. radial gradients and uh, hex RGB. Um, what else? Hold on. I should just post the features. Yeah, HSB, hue, saturation, brightness. Basically added some different color profiles um, and a lot of other things we'll talk about later. Uh, how big is this file? I'll tell you here in a sec. Boosted, this this XD file is 75 megs. So I'm animating or zooming in and out of a 75 meg file. Real, as, if, as if you wouldn't, didn't even know. It's not a big deal. All right. Okay. So again, working on thinking about what it would be like for this particular page to get modified, okay? You know, we could even just keep these episodes and be like, mm -hmm. yeah, they're called the same thing. I mean, if we cared to, we can do like a... We can always know. make more mods. Um, and now, you know, okay, so we can also say, what if I want to filter things? So some of the screens for stuff, right? Like this one, this is really great for modifying one thing. Mm -hmm. and um, And for this kind of one, right, it's like, Okay, there's not that much content on it in the first place. So what I can just mm -hmm. do is remock it up because I'm going to make enough mods to it anyway. It'll probably just be easier for me to remock it up. So that's what kind of what I'm going to be sharing. Um, and eventually, right, so let's imagine that with this Giveify thing, there could be filters about what kind of what kind of charities you're interested in learning about. So that's kind of what I'm going to be sharing is what if these filters weren't just about downloads and that kind of stuff, but actually about content of the podcast. So I could see actual podcasts that were um, about that kind of stuff. So, okay, so now I make a new artboard. The way that I like to do that is I just like to make the new artboard right there. And I can sort of just share here. And you know, what I like to do is just yeah. copy over everything I worked on. Then I put this little rectangle on top. And here's the best way to do this. Let me just show you here. Background blur. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look how similar it is to that situation, right? I love it. You just make it, right? Check that out, right? You immediately have something that really mocks it up, looks just like it. It's really simple. Yeah. You've even got your content in the back. I didn't even quite notice that, but yeah, it's just, it is the blurred out album and stuff. So I think one thing in like learning about UI is also like learning about sort of like every little piece of it. So you could look at that filter page and be like, oh, that's mostly about the filters and not see that, oh, actually it's like, 
you know, putting a dark background blur on the content, like in below it, right? It's like, there's lots of different steps that make that up, right? Yeah, I mean, I honestly, I want that in other apps too. You know, I want, I want Photoshop to be able to do that. Like I can blur things, but you're actually blurring the object on top and it blurs everything out below it. Somebody also asked um, what font I'm using right now. This is circular. You know, as a person who loves to talk about typefaces, circular is a great little font nice. used in lots of different places. So, okay, let's say that um, now we're filtering all episodes and we're filtering for um, like content. And so maybe you have something that's like, actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do this. We're gonna go, okay. You fill in what you wanna filter by. Okay, so what I like to do too when I'm doing this kind of work is make things look like the sort of like UI standards that are currently in practice with something like Spotify. I don't wanna make something that doesn't look right in that space. I want it to sort of follow along those guidelines, right? So if things kind of have a, a thin width, I'm not gonna make something with an incredibly chunky big width, right? I wanna mm -hmm. make sure that it looks right with the thing. So here I'm making this like- so Yeah, Brett Nation wants to know how you made an artboard. Okay, yeah, so the way I like to make an artboard usually is I'll click on like this one, so I've clicked it. I go Command C, I'm on a Apple computer, and then it shows up, and I do that, mm -hmm. and then I go like this, and I just get rid of that content, and you've got a new artboard. Another way you can do it is you've got your new artboards, right? You can draw out a new artboard, right? You know, that's a way to make things not as official. I like to make them, you know, if you're working in an iPhone, it's an easy way. Someone asked if I could explain the difference between UX and UI. I would be happy to explain that. <laughs> um, yeah, the difference between UX and UI um, is is that um, UI is a lot about like doing this kind of like pixel pushing kind of work. Not to say that UI work isn't super important, but a lot of the time it's about making things look really nice and pretty on the screen, whether that's on a website or on an app. Um, mm -hmm. UX work is like a lot of the sort of like research, brainstorming, problem solving work that's like before that the app is ever an idea. Mm -hmm. um, so. So UI in that situation is like a little bit more of like what I'm doing right this very second, but UX mm -hmm. is all the work to get me up to this point. Um, okay. And thinking about your, uh, you know, you, you have to think about yourself as like a UX designer, as like someone who is interested in, in doing a lot of the research stuff and doing a lot of the like prototyping and testing with people instead of just like just working, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that both are noble pursuits and yeah whatever no, you're passionate no, about no, yeah no, the thing is like no no one's better than the other they're definitely of course like different. they are super you know? but you are right it's like ux kind of has to come before ui like ux might not mean making any vector or pixel pushing any pixel of course know. yeah i mean it's all sort of like which is fascinating it's also all terminology we're like, we're, that's so new you know what i mean yeah I mean, we're used to jumping into like Photoshop or like doing something right away when sometimes like, you know what, hey, UX says, hey, you know what, it might not even have an interface, right? Totally. It might not. Could be your Amazon Echoes of the world. So, yes, uh, Martin, we have Creative Jams happening all over the place. So just go to adobecreativejams.com. Natalie's spoken at a couple of them for it. Like three, I guess. I like to three? do it. That's awesome. Yeah, I really like to. It's really yeah. fun. Always like lots of really nice, cool people show. So basically what we try to do, like we bring people like Natalie in uh, to speak. And then we also have design challenges there. Uh, so check out Creative Jams happening across the US. Arturo, good to see you, my friends. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome everybody to our uh, lovely Adobe Live community. You all are part of it. So Robzilla is the man. Moonir is part of our community. Is that okay that I just like... Some of the pe these people I like know pretty well, but oh, yeah. never like never met. You know, it'd be wild if I met them in person. Yeah. Like you have a face. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know, I know what you mean. So. This is good. Okay, so let's just say. Okay, I want 
For XD, which more, which is more preferred, vector based or pixel based? For XD, you know, I might not be the best person to ask that question. I would say vector based. Vector based. Because you could always, even when you output it to high DPI, whatever you need to do, vector is always going to scale. But quite frankly, you're just you're gonna, if it's a photo, it's going to have to be pixel based. Yeah, That's it. totally. And a lot of the work that I do is not about like pushing out something right at that moment that's like pixel perfect. A lot of it is like idea sharing. So it doesn't have to be something that's like perfect at that moment. It's just about sharing the idea and you know, sometimes sharing with something that's slightly, slightly pixelated, but really gets the idea yeah. across. You want to make sure that you're not making it overcomplicated too early on. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Terrence. Vector for graphics, raster for images. The fact that you say raster, because like some people use the word raster and some say bitmap, and I think... Oh my god. I think the raster is like a, an older use of bitmap. I don't know. I'm not... <laughs> I don't That's know. That's not my wheelhouse of uh, yeah. terminology, maybe. <laughs> okay. We are all friends here. Radio Gradients. Oh, Dennis, thank you for bringing that up. Because, yes, we do have Radio Gradients available in Adobe XD now. Imagine that. So, it's kind of hidden if you just switch my screen real fast. Um, right over here. Of course, fill with a color. I can fill with a linear gradient, as we see. And then, then right here, zoop, Radio Gradient is brand new as of, whatever, 9 a.m. this morning. Maybe late last night for you. So... That's what's happening. And by the way, there's also this real fast. If I just change it to radial, we also have uh, different color profiles. So you can go from hex to RGB, HSB, you know, pick the color that you want, add it here, and have some fun with it. Cool. Well, now I'm thinking about what if I typed into here. And what I also like to use is this UI temp elements for iOS. Ooh, okay, so oh, this okay, is gotcha. great. You go file, you get this? UI kits, Apple iOS, and you click it, you go to this page, you download it. This, you know, downloading these kind of kits, whether or not, let's check them out. They're um, Google material, Windows, uh, Microsoft Windows, wireframing ones. You know, I, I know that XD released a bunch of new um, wireframing prototyping kits yeah. today. You could even go to, I oh, gotta check on this, but go to, if you just go to the wires one, I mean, that's a good one to use if you're entering the contest, which is the design challenge. Like, start with that. That's like a good place just to start with, right? And again, like, like we're doing, it's like, we're kind of working out the ideas for things. If you're making a health app, this will allow you to use a map, for instance, so you don't have yeah, to create it from Yeah, you've scratch. got all of this stuff, so you don't have to do it all yourself. Also, starting out with something like this allows you to sort of get your hands on things that, like, you know look good, and then you can start to start to build your frame of reference for visual identity based on that kind of stuff instead of, like, starting out from nowhere. It's, it's hard to do that. So right now I'm looking for this keyboard. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna copy that over. Now I've got this nice Boom. little keyboard, all official. And what I'm gonna do is go like this. And what I'll probably do is also do like a little bit of a little bit of background over here. You don't want a border. No. I gotta check out these uh, UI kits, Sarah, that are released today. I didn't know more released today and I feel, I feel like an idiot, but I will find them for sure. I will say, while you kind of concentrate on that, I yeah. love that blur technique, this is so nice. Uh, but Francisco, real fast, uh, this is again just, it could be any one of those UI kits. I hope, I hope they've used uh, assets See off to the side, assets. It's basically by clicking this button right down here. And wires uses them because I can change the color right here just by right clicking select edit. And when I pick a new color, you can see it changes all of them. So 
Just trying to give you these shortcuts. You can make stuff. Always. Enter in the challenge and then win. Because why not? How did you get that keyboard? I feel like I shared that. The UI kit. I think you did. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just check. Well, it's not switched to my screen yet, but let's go ahead and see if we have some entries. Oh, imagine that. Uh, thank you so much, Hugo, uh, Kimberly, uh, Rasia, Esther, Kelsey, Hannah, Edward. Thank you for entering a design. Organization. Yeah. Arts, education, climate awareness, animal conservation. Um, oh, I'm really drawing a blank. Like, um, civil liberties. Ah, oh, that's a good one. Okay. So now what I like to do is like, okay, I'm on this screen and when you look at something like this and you've got all this information, yeah, you know, we don't have a super clear way to understand how Spotify would do it, but I'm thinking like myself, I'm thinking, okay, if I see all of this content, um, what I don't wanna do is, um, is like have everything pop up in the same hierarchy. I wanna make sure that there's some hierarchy to this information. So I, I know that I can type in here. Um, so what I'm gonna do here too is go like this and share like a little thing that's like, here, I'm typing now. And I'm going climate awareness, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to make them a little bit more grayed. Isn't it, isn't it wild kind of doing, you know, designing live for people? Yeah, it's exciting. You, you kind of like, you're not used to verbalizing like what you're doing. No, I you know. You know, you're like walking everybody through things that just kind of go on in your head. So it's like we My get to hear. My crazy brain. <laughs> we get to hear what's, what's going what on exactly in there. What exactly I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now see how I've like made it so that there is less of that, like having to make the distinction. Um, yep, so, and and someone said, someone mentioned like, oh, I should use the repeat grid. Something that I like to do is honestly, I'll just copy over here and I'll do it myself if it's something that doesn't need extensive repeat gridding. I use a repeat grid if I have to do like a profile with a ton of different content on it. But if I'm just gonna do something with a few text boxes, I don't always use the repeat grid. Mm -hmm. I know designers that are like, that is a big part of my workflow is making sure I'm using their pre grid and using all those tools. I like to sort of just do things if I if I need them when I don't need them right here. This is pretty easy for me. Yeah, and I've I've seen designers that will use the repeat grid just to make the like initial text boxes and then they just like break it apart. They'll break it up. Yeah. Like that's kind of an interesting way to work too. So we're gonna say here, let's pretend that I clicked arts education and uh, that's my box. Now I can get rid of this, get rid of this, just like that. Uh, thank you, and Peter, Peter Bellick as well. We'll check yours out in a second. And Devin Ward just submitted one. thing is if you've got like two things that are sort of like fighting each other like save and cancel or like if you're ever on um venmo i always have a hard time um trying to decide if i should ask someone to pay me or if i should pay someone a good way to make distinctions is to use color as a distinction marker so you know what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have save and cancel options at the bottom. I'm gonna have cancel because more likely I'm gonna want people to save the things that they've chosen. I'm gonna have cancel be slightly grayer so it doesn't 
pop out as much, okay? Mm -hmm. That's something that Spotify isn't doing here, but I'm just sharing like a modification of it while using like all those hierarchies that make it a little bit easier. Someone asked what font I'm using. I'm using Circular. Circular is the, the Spotify font. See, because, you know, going back to the stuff Spotify does, look, look how similar it looks. <laughs> it's the same. Um, it's, a, it's a good one. So, okay, so now let's pretend that I've saved it. And at that point, once I've saved that kind of stuff, if everything's about arts, I'm going to see modified um, podcast titles. So what I'll do here is I'll go like this. And I'll just quickly... And we still have another hour, so, you know. Yeah, do your thing. I feel like we're... Yeah. So um, differences between Adobe XD and other tools like Craft and InVision. I mean, InVision... InVision is pretty different. Yeah, I mean, InVision, there's no tool out there that actually does the design and prototyping like in one. So you're really just prototyping in InVision. Uh, Craft integrates, those are basically extensions or plugins to like Sketch. So you're really taking sort of multiple like different apps to make a complete solution. And what XD tries to do is just be like the complete solution for what you're trying to do. And again, it's what, it hit 1.0. Uh, last year, so like it's not even a year old. So, and we're open to your suggestions and feedback and feature requests. Just go through the help menu. Because at the end of the day, it's like not even ours, not Adobe's, as much as it is yours. So, thank you for asking. Um. Yeah, and I will also say the team at at XD is just so awesome and they're working very, very hard to make lots of different things happen. So um, you can, all those ideas that you've had that's like, wouldn't it be great if this happened? I can promise you they're already thinking about those things and they're in the works. They're an awesome team of people. Yeah. Yeah, they are, and they're, they're listening. They're active on these forums. Even if you go to the forums through the help menu, you'll you're basically talking to a guy that's upstairs on the second floor that works for XD. It's kind of what's happening. So, so yeah, the Invision Studio, we'll see what happens with that. That's not quite out yet. Um, you know, if you're used to using, say, Illustrator, you could just do a copy and paste of those vector assets into uh, XD. I know somebody also mentioned, you know, copying and pasting from Photoshop, and you could do that as well. So if you have a vector graphic in uh, in Photoshop, you just copy and paste that. You can just right click and copy SVG on that layer. Or you copy the actual pixels and paste it in. Not yeah. a big deal. Copy from the web, paste it in. That sort of thing. And go on and on. I'm excited to see these entries. Oh, yeah. Not that we, we have to see them no, now, but I'm excited. Out, let's, let's check them out now, okay? Can we? Is that all right? Is that all right? Inside voice, because it's 1230. In, in, in midnight. In where? In, yeah. uh, I don't know, it was Moscow, definitely Riyadh, uh, heading into Ukraine. It's like, Gee. actually, about midnight there. Using my inside voice. We're dealing with, this should be Hugo Almedia's Unstop app. We'll sign up initially. Let's go full screen and view it in all its glory. Let's go ahead and log in using Twitter. How far do you want to go today? All the way, baby. Clicking run. Uh, maybe it's tr it's tracking you wherever you go, making sure you're gonna hit the you know the five k. You know, also a nice use of map in the background. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's nice to have something that like is a readable map, but so is not like just using Google Maps. Although I I also like using Google Maps. Yeah, that's good. And that, so this map came from wires, which totally, totally for it. I'm not sure how it's coming in on the stream, by the way. It might come in too yellow, but it's a nice, it's just a nice tan here. So, uh, yeah, so that's it. Three screens. That's all we need. We click right here. looks like we have Something Connect here. Your Music app, cool. which is awesome. Okay. So let's go next up. What do we have? Let's go to Couch Coach by Kimberly Kruger. I'm diving into this. Logging in. Get off the couch, you couch potato. Uh, okay, well, let's enter today's workout. Looks like we've, you know, logged a certain number of calories, water. Scroll down so you've extended that artboard. And hey, you're doing good. For a couch potato, you're doing quite well. That's a good job. Kimberly, next up. Walk through by... 
yeah, by Ra uh, I don't know how to say this name. R A S S A E S T A G R. Let's move your daily goals. Burn what? Uh, burn 300 calories. I hope you can do that. Just don't eat. Just don't eat some of those snacks that are right over there. Funny one. Okay. Quillo meters. Okay, a winner for uh, made up made up words <laughs> yeah. that I've never heard of. But great job. I four can't four that, screens. But I love perfect. That challenge. You know what I like about this actually is the just the smooth gradation. Mm -hmm. And simple. Like, it's I really it's simple. Like easy to less on the page. Use. If you don't need it, you don't need it. Nice. Uh, this should be Kelsey ne Neil House. Oh, this one we already reviewed, by the way, but I think they've added to it. We'll just take oh, a look. Wow. Still a good reference, by the way. Um, I just like the the gray for this login. Uh, well, this, this and you know, the out. other thing is, if you go back to that original thing, I'm not sure if you know how to get back there. Yeah, see how when you click through, also the dots at the bottom are like... The white one is showing up and it's coming to the foreground and the other ones are grayed and they're in the back and then you keep going and it continues to move. That's a really good way to indicate where you are without being like, you're on page four or mm -hmm. like, you know, it's a great way to be really simple. Also notice that all the dots are gray and not white, like that are the smaller ones. Hierarchy makes it a lot easier to look at it. Yeah, that's good. And, and it's not so big that it's saying, hey, I'm a button you need to click on. Yes. Great job, let's dive into Twist by Hannah Carlson. Embedded in a Behance page, golf clap. Diving into this, sign in, quick pass. Ooh, I see, so it's like about stretching. Gently okay. lean forward, do your, do your stretching, stretch. You gotta stretch, you should. And there we are, full screen. So great job. I like, uh, I like it. Max Run by Edward Maximus. Let's go all black here. Let's create an account. Join Max Run. Go to the dashboard. Ooh, let's go back. Great color scheme. I like the gray with the pop of color. Cool. That's some serious running. <laughs> so we have wink, week, month, and then today. Good color scheme again, don't you think? Yeah. Am I allowed to like talk about them? Yeah, by okay, all means. Okay, cool. Can... <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, by, um, yeah, we can totally talk, talk about these. We'll get these kind of refined too. I think we know which ones are, you know, kind of rising to the top, but yeah. Cool, yeah. We can go to this next one. This is a health app by uh, Peter uh, oh, cool. uh, uh -huh. Billick. Let's feel awesome today. I just like that thought. Uh huh. I want to feel awesome today and every day. Let's dive into running. Ooh, they brought in their own map. Let's start running. Look, they're in New York. Here's they're trying they're to appeal in, to you. They're in they're Williamsburg. Like, hey. yeah. Ooh, they're in Williamsburg. I can... <laughs> it's all right there. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Finish. Great job, Stu. Cool. Mm, way to get that heart rate up. Wow. 35 minutes. Let's feel awesome today. It's a good, it's a good, good little. To have. Yeah, I like it. Uh, Devin Ward, Group Vita. What do you think of Devin Ward's Group Vita? Activity or goal, time or progress, and the weeks. We could say, hey, let's dive into um, the activity. Has to be, I guess, around running. Let's go into runners. Uh, it's a running community. Running is life. Swipe up to enter your time and distance. Oh, that's cool. It gives you, like, your time is similar to 85% of the people in the group. So I like the social and tracking aspect. 
So yeah, Vanessa, good point. Like, so when you're designing in XD, uh, after you design it, you do need somebody to code it and all that functionality and all that fun stuff. I mean, one one way to like not make a friend with a developer is to like use a use a design app that writes code as well, and then say, here's your here's all the code. Like, as a developer, they they want to know measurements and they want the assets, but they want to write it all themselves and have that control. So. What the developer should have is answers to all their questions on how something should work and the look of everything. And on that note, by the way, is once you do that, you would export out using, sorry. You can now export out to Zeppelin and Avacode. So I can just take this, export. I can export out to Avacode and I can also bring or send this to um, Zeppelin as well. And not only that, when I preview this, if I publish this, I can publish design specs. So I can send the developer the design specs as well. Uh, Jeanette, you're exactly right. Um, that light green on white was hard to read. So. Cool. Chugging away, you know? Everybody's just like working away. Everybody's like submitting I love designs. It. It's like you're cranking we are, on things. They are. <laughs> God. It's a cool submission situation. Like I if I was not a resident, like I would think about doing it for sure. Yeah. It's definitely like a good idea. And you know, another good thing is like it's good ideas to just kind of like work on something to get your feeling for something. It doesn't have to be something official, just to get a feeling for what it would be like to, to do it. Yeah. You don't exactly. have to make everything you do be spot on, you know? Yeah, just just get your hands dirty, try things. Um, so yeah, so Joseph, you would, Adobe XD would be for a UI designer, could easily use XD, so you wouldn't necessarily hand off this file to a UI designer. It's like the assets technically would go to um, a developer. So from here, you know, again, it's just a matter of selecting all these assets, which this is also a new thing. Let me actually, let me just double check this. Okay. Let's get to a cool screen. Someone asked if uh, they said, I noticed Origami Studio open in your doc. Do you use that often? Um, you know, I use Origami Studio if I want to show something that's like really, really high, high fidelity. Like you're showing something that has like motion. This is Origami Studio. Um, this is something that I use if I want to make something super high fidelity. Honestly, though, the great thing about XD is that what I'm really able to do is prototype within. So what I can share right now is okay. So. What I've kind of worked on so far is just kind of basic Spotify filtering kind of stuff. But what I do is I go, okay, I've got this box and when I touch it, I want it to connect to this thing. Okay, this is the prototyping functionality of XD, not the design. You can switch them back and forth, check that out. You see the little thing change right here. Now I know that this box, if I click on it, it will lead me to this thing. If I click this, I can go, okay, I want it to go to this target, which is the podcast page. I want there to be no transition. I could have there be a dissolve. You know, some people do something where it slides left or whatever, and then I can do easing with that. A lot of time, I just, <coughs> bless you, sort of. Mm -hmm. I am, a lot of times I just don't do transitions because it makes it look a little bit more like it's happening right then. Um, but for some things you do transitions. So now I can go, okay, you know, um, this is what ended up getting the, the filter, okay, so let's just make this page um, the next box, okay, now we've got, um, actually that was the wrong filter page, so I can actually get rid of that now, and I see how easily I was able to like yeah, select get, it from here and then yeah. go here. And then to remove, just pull it off and don't attach it to anything. It's so like, it makes a lot of sense. You know, if I click in here, this is what I want to be able to send here. If I select this, this is what I want to populate this. You know, this is something I'm really used to doing, so I can like move my brain around and be like, this goes to this and this, but sometimes you wanna like draw out mm -hmm. exactly where everything's going in like wireframes to make it easier. This save goes to this page. 
this, if I click on it and I listen to it, now I'm listening to it. So now what we can do is we go, okay, you play it. All right, we can make this a little bit bigger. You know, what we can even do is just go like this. So I've got it on this whole thing and I go, okay, I can click into this, see how it now it's doing all of this where I can click in and I see what it looks like. And I go filters, I can filter by information type. So now I'm, it's looking like it's a real, real thing in Spotify or a real product. And I can go information type and I can click all of these and I could type something in, say I click arts education, it auto filters, I go save. Now all of it is about arts. And so all those filters have like worked in adding it, right? Then I can click and go like this. And now I'm listening to that podcast, right? Mm -hmm. See how something like also me clicking this, not that much changes. It's not like I immediately see this big new podcast. Giveaway, yeah, sorry. No, no, basically it's just like making things quick and easy. So that's how far I've gotten thus far. So I'm able to prototype it out and keep designing now that I know that that kind of that workflow is working. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. I like it. I know somebody, oh, I think it was like, sorry, Adobe Live team was like, hey, you should give away stuff just give because away. you can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, let's do this. Let's do it. All right. So these are uh, some socks. Oh, Vanna White. Very, very nice really socks. Exciting. Left and right. Oh no, they're two. They're two. They're two left. <sighs> left socks. Take them back. But you win them both, and That's we're throwing in the notebook joke. as well. You were talking about, uh, of course, like brainstorming and everything. This is also, uh, it's not filled out. Not, not all your answers to all your uh, problems are in here. There's just a grid system. And just say something in the chat. Look at say, how many people are excited about this, this uh, giveaway. I want a cute pair of socks. Some people already have socks. Maybe your feet are cold right now. I know we're heading into Don't winter. Don't get cold feet about Joining this giveaway, though. Ah, uh, nailed it. <laughs> so, yes, sock hype away. Only slightly worn by Natalie. She wore them here. I've only been she wearing them for a, a year or so. You had to use her to Oh, for a year. <laughs> she had to use her test them. Uh, I'm like, wait. Oh, no, these are the wrong socks. They're PX socks. They're P Oh, sorry. I had them upside down. Bad joke. Okay, so now we're gonna get. That was a very bad joke. Even over here, this guy, Francisco, is supposed to be quiet. He couldn't help but note how bad that joke was. But we are gonna pick a winner. The Adobe Live team will select that winner from all you uh, fantastic people out there. Just make sure you have fingers that can touch a keyboard so we can also see you respond saying thanks. So, yes, PX, PX socks. We got the we got the wrong ones in. PX instead of XD. It's not a good don't, joke. Don't listen to me. <laughs> no, you're like I'm glad I'm only here. Great joke, days. really good. <laughs> you're like I'm glad my residency. Solid. Whoa. <laughs> All right, we're using the very high tech method. The the uh, the Gusbot five thousand. Um, takes all that data and then prints everything out on a little post-it. Our other Vanna White. And the winner is... Joe Loft. Joe Loft, congratulations. Using our high-tech method of post-it note right now. Uh, just say, yeah, thank you. We need to make sure you're there, Joe, Wal uh, Joe Loft. Um, I would love to have a giveaway where like the person's initials are the same initials as XD or PX. What? Yeah, there's That's their initials so funny. Okay. are like Paul Xavier, even though probably technically an E. Joseph Rosamondo, close, my friend. We're looking for Joe Loft. Let's make sure you respond. This is also why we need you to log into Behance so we can contact you for prizes. Get on Behance. Woohoo! <laughs> we got him. We found Joe. Here, present. Yay! Present. That's so exciting. Congratulations, Joe Loft. Your feet will not be cold this winter, and we should expect some 
nice sketches from here. Who doesn't want some nice socks? You know what I mean? Man, just saying. How are your socks looking today? Not good. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, let's be real. Not good. Not so good. <laughs> You're welcome, Joe. Don't worry, we will. Uh, we still have the challenge. You can click on the challenge tab, health app. We just reviewed about six, about 10 minutes ago. We'll do that giveaway in about 15 minutes. Guillermo, it's still winter in California, even though it doesn't feel like it is. How's the weather been like in Brooklyn? Um. Okay, that is something that, you know, usually people are like, I don't wanna talk about the weather. Being someone that just moved to New York, I do want to talk about the weather. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was normal and it was super hot until like through October and then the bomb cyclone hit and I was not prepared and so I bought some mittens. <laughs> and um, it has been quite cold there. It Recently it was like pretty all right, but honestly, like when it gets cold there, it's so cold. Is it just like like piercing cold it's like it's piercing and it's um yeah it's it's angry <laughs> is the only way i can describe it interesting yeah sometimes you have this cold where it just like cuts right through you yeah and even even if, like i'm just like if you're in downtown manhattan man you walk down some streets and it just channels that wind you know and some cities are just like that it's, it's really just like a intense. wind tunnel or something and uh yeah. Yeah, it's crazy intense. Okay, so I'm just blocking it out to look like a real thing. Dee, dee, dee. I like it. Dee, dee, dee. These are easy ways. Also, when things are like not like big crazy shapes, it's like, look how easy we can just sort of re mock up this thing. Um, let's see, what else do we have that's... Okay. I'm so glad everyone is talking about the weather from where they are. Cleveland, it's cold, raining, and snowing. I bet it's cold that's in Cleveland. Good. That's not like cold and wet. Good. Well, yeah, I mean, this is San Francisco, right? So it's like always temperate and kind of great. Yeah. Okay. It's been nice. Did you get here yesterday? I got here yesterday and it was amazing. Cool. So. Uh, uh, Mike, any plans to have Envision sync with XD? I don't know if there are any plans to, but we're totally willing to, you know, work with other partners. I know we are, as announced today, Avacode and uh, sort of exporting assets for, uh, actually I have them both loaded. I'll have to launch it, but Zeppelin as well. So those are two sort of like extensions for XD. So yeah, we're a game, but nothing on the books. <laughs> So, oh, that's good. What about horizontal scrolling as well as the ability to pin laters? Yeah, so that would be nice. I'm. Yeah. I know that pinning is something that they're working on, and they're they're excited about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know. I see. And I bet you anything, you can always kind of see where. If I go there really fast. In XD, you can go out to user voice as it's known. And that's where you can see the feature requests and the ones that are ranked highest. And the very highest one actually is fixed elements in scrolling artboards with 3,600 votes, upvotes. Trust me, we're working on it, but it's how to execute that. I'm excited for that too. Yeah. The other thing I always say about XD that's so great is that 
you know, if you're using something like Sketch, I mean, Envision isn't really the same thing as like Sketch, but if you're using something like Sketch, you have to like buy Sketch. I know it's not super crazy expensive, but it's like that on top of Photoshop, on top of Illustrator, it's like, you can't really be all the way in the design game if you're not using Photoshop, something like Photoshop and Illustrator pretty frequently. Um, and you know, with XD, it comes in your cloud subscription. So you got it already there. It's like, you don't need to pay for lots of different crazy things. It's an accessible tool for people who wanna dive their hands into uh, TUX design, which is really exciting. And I'm all about the accessible tools. Okay. Yeah, so it integrates with uh, Simply, Abacode, Zeppelin, uh, Protopie, and Kite Composer. So those are the uh, third-party workflow integrations that we didn't have yesterday that we have today, so. Batch export is something that's new. So in your layers panel, you can always check a box that says, hey, you know what? Batch export this item and this item and this item. Working um, away. Do you foresee XD turning into working, into or working with a program that allows a non-coder to make their design and into an actual app without coding? The only problem with that is we really tick off a lot of coders anytime we make something that does the code for you. So kind of what you're talking about, Jana, is the like the Muse for apps. So Adobe Muse will allow you to make websites without writing code. So you're talking about that for app for apps. I don't really see that happening, to be honest with you. Honestly, that would take an extreme amount of work. It would be awesome, but that's and. But we like our coders, right? And, yeah, we do. And we Trust like, me. you know, it's like the amount of work that that would take is not just like building a tool. It's like that takes a crazy amount of time to make happen, so. Yeah, and then if you think about it, like if there was a tool out there that was created, like what would that do to the marketplace of apps? Would it just get flooded by everybody making a web, like an app like they make websites? And is that a good or bad thing? We like can, they make we websites? We can debate that. Yeah. You know? And the other thing is like, yeah, you can make a Squarespace site or a Muse site or a portfolio site pretty easy. But if you need to make something that's like super high functionality, it's a little bit harder. And that's where dev people come in. So a lot of UX work is higher functionality and, and that's really where dev people show up. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so here what I'm working on is say that we are now, like I'm prototyping this, and we're listening to this. Transitions, let's have it um, slide up. Yeah, that should be good. None, let's just check this out. This is the best part about prototyping right here. I can go, okay, yeah. And I kind of want to make it even like, let's see the difference between push up and slide up to get so. like a good idea. 10 minutes to get in your uh, design for this app challenge on health. And when you do publish it, it'd be awesome if you just included the app name and your name, if you add that to the title, that just makes it easier to make sure you get your prize. Someone Sorry said, huh? Sorry oh no, know. no, not at all. This is also about that for sure. I am, someone said, I'm a UX, UI design student. What tips do you have for getting started in the industry? I am. As I was a student very, very recently. Best way to get in the industry is work on things that you wanna be working on. Don't do work where you're like, I hate this project. I hate what I'm doing and I'll put it on my portfolio, but I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Put things on your portfolio and work on things that you're like, I'm stoked about this idea. I wanna do this. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a really, really good way to get involved. Another great way is go to events, meet people, actually get out there. Don't just, you know, like, work on something and then not put it out there. You wanna make sure that you're acknowledging the creative community around you, whether or not that's 10 people, or if you live in New York, right? Like thousands of people mm -hmm. call on resources because as a student, the best thing to do honestly is be like, I'm a student. I would love to visit X place. Would it be possible to grab coffee? 
that is a great way to get to know people in this industry in a way where it's just like you're having conversations with people who you look up to, who are mm-hmm. amazing designers. It's a great way to get out there and get started in the industry. Yeah. That is good. And, you know, I mean, really, this is a this is a relative, a relatively new industry, you know, and a, uh, yeah, totally. Like you start now and you could be, again, the expert of tomorrow sort of thing. And how did these people get started? They probably started with even doing a design challenge like we're doing. Yeah, I hope I hope people work on these and put them in their portfolio, like you said, of, of work that they'd want to do for, you know, for someone. Right. Totally. Because as almost like as as a, an employer you know or manager like i would hire somebody if they if they gave me these strong briefs whether they were real or not or whatever is almost beside the point as long as first of all i do want to know that they can work with other people um but it's it's at the end of the day your portfolio and the fact that you could work with others all right Awesome. Okay. All right, Mitch is Mitch is back. Welcome back, Mitch. He's back. He's wondering who we missed you, Mitch. He is asking who missed him. We were wondering where you went. But what we'll do is like, yeah, Natalie will just go ahead and repeat everything she just said for you since you're back now, Mitch. Yeah. Just kidding. No, 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 don't. Oh. No. Okay. <laughs> I will not repeat it. <laughs> um. And just so you know what's going on, you have five minutes to enter in your design or your prototype. Just use that challenge tab. You'll submit that link. Ideally, you'd put your name in the title of that app. And we'll pick a winner soon. And just a time check. So yeah, we have about 30 more minutes left with Natalie today. Then we have Michael Tra- Crabtree up next, who he just walked in. He's getting ready. Hey. He gave me the thumbs up. He's ready. To, he's ready to go now. He's ready to do this. He does the work of six men. Watch him. He's coming on in thirty minutes. You just you just wait and wait and see, people. It'll be cool. I'm. The other thing is. Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, Rabin Sharma is asking about changing the like the initial screen that pops up when they do a prototype. Like. Just like hitting that button. Boop. Nobody saw that, by the way, but we'll switch to huh. my screen. <laughs> like, we can't tell you. How, how do you think we're going to keep an edge if we tell you everything? Uh, but nonetheless, design, we click to prototype. We're linking things together. I want to start at this screen. It's just clicking this up there. So that should be the start screen. And if you don't have any, inter- you could also ha- not have any interactions connected at all and still publish it out and you can arrow through pop, 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 all the screens using your keypad. So hit that share button. Oh, that's a good, that's a, that's a good question. Armando, Natalie, do you use a, do you draw all the icons yourself or using like a, a free set or do I, you have a set that you use? I really use the Noun Project. That is a great place to get icons um, for free. Noun Project is a fabulous, fabulous resource. So if you're unfamiliar with them, check them out. Um, I also will draw my own icons pretty frequently. Yeah, I mean that's what, kind of what you've been doing here. I mean, you I do need both. to emulate. If it's if it's easy, I'm I'll do it myself. But if it's like super complicated, like if I'm looking for something like uh, a flamingo icon. Well, yeah. I probably am not going to draw them myself. Look on the Noun Project, maybe modify one on the Noun Project. I'm a big modifier of existing stuff. Yeah, seriously. I mean, why, you know, flamingo. Look, gonna I'm going to spell this wrong for one. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, flamingo. Flamingo. And it is part of the Noun Project. I have just have the, like, the little app. So. Look at that. Again. Wait, that's crazy. Zoop. Could not have thought of a more obscure thing. Oh, so I am not. I don't think I'm paying for the noun project. I don't think I've purchased it, which is why it's not. All right. So, looks like Brett submitted something. Appreciate that, my friend. In it, in it to win it.
Happy to. Oh shoot, we have more entries. Natalie, we probably have like 10 or so more to cover. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. Help us. Thank you, thank you, and, 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 Andy Kui? I do not know. Shashank, thank you, my friend. Got your entry as well. Fitness app, could be fitness related, but generally health related. I should check some out. Yes, totally. We're gonna need some time to do this. Yeshai, thank you, my friends. Just keep in mind, it does have to be three pages or three, three uh, screens. So let's link them together. And I would love to hear when I show yours if you uh, if this is your first time using XD. Nice. I'm getting a sneak peek at some of these. Palestine's in the house. I love it. Patrick, I will look, see if we got yours. Just did get uh, Chris's. And Ivan's. Yeah, Patrick, just make sure you have uh, more than one page is the thing. Because I think you need, you need at least three. So. It might just be one, my friend. I'll see what I can do. Let me download it. It might have more because it looks like that is a XD file. So when you hit share or technically it's the publish prototype, just click publish prototype. That's going to give you the link. And uh, that's what you'll send through. There we go. Looks like we do have it. And uh, if you share the link and not the XD file, if you're sharing an XD file with me, it's like I got to get the fonts and it's a whole thing. So, but I do thank you. I think that's, that should be Ivan's. Let me double check. No, that was Patrick's. Copy. I'm all over the map with these. This is actually a new feature though. I know you, some of you have sent me through, they've, you've sent me a, um, an XD file through Dropbox, which I don't prefer. You could just, you could just hit the publish prototype, but the thing is, is I actually get a preview of it, which is nice. And that's a new feature as of today. We are working, working hard. hard. So fast. It is. <laughs> Did it feel that way when you walk in? We had, yes, we have we have Michael in here is working away, right? We'll see him here in uh, about 30 minutes. Ever since Michael Shea has walked in, everybody's like been working. It's like, oh man, Michael's here. Gotta impress. We better, we better work hard. I'm a big advocate for working hard. I know you are. You don't have to tell <laughs> me that. <laughs> I've witnessed it firsthand. <laughs> It's so true. Armando, thank you so much. Looks like you're a previous winner. And did you enter another one, Armando Mello? 
Wow, you're killing me, my friends. He's like cut from the same cloth as you. He's done. He's already won and has submitted what? another one. That's great. You show off. <laughs> Uh, Pablo Oliveros, thank you. Brett Nation, have yours. Gonna check that out. And they keep coming in. We have the cutoff already for this round, by the way. If you did not submit yours, we will cover them next during the Michael and Michael show, as I'm calling it. They're up next. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Michael and Michael, guess which is which? So... How you doing, man? Good? Right on. Michael Crabtree, uh, former, what was it, former o Oakland Raiders football star, right, is turn UX UI designer, graphic designer, and will be up next. Actually, no, it's not the football player. But if people want to maybe assume that, that's okay. <laughs> Do you not correct them sometimes? Like, oh. Uh, Michael Crabtree is a football player. I look, well, one. okay, so right before I was uh -huh. about to go on the live stream, they were like, Michael Crabtree's gonna come, and I was like, oh, okay. Looked him up, I was like, I doubt it's that Michael Crabtree, but <laughs> honestly, if it was, that would be sort of amazing. That would be awesome, right? Ferocious typing. Okay. Oh, you guys are killing me. Gus, there's so many of them. Adobe Live Team. There's so many. Okay, we cut it off. Whew. I was getting stressed. But man, it's so good to see Julia Sams again. So we'll have to, we'll do this every week. By the way, we're here every week, so join us every week. Uh, sometimes it's just creating an icon, in which case we'll get like a hundred in, in like in two hours. That's like so crazy many to in. me. And even now we have so many entries, and you're 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 designing and prototyping an app. I'm like impressed. But I also don't do that much. That's not true. You're always out. Okay, maybe a little bit. <laughs> uh, two Julia Sams in there. Thank you, Julia Sams. Look at you. Interesting. Thank you so much. And Christian is the last one that we have for these entries. Okay. Thank you, Christian. I'm kind of ready to share what I worked on. Okay. If that is good. Yes. Okay. So now I'm I'm gonna share with you kind of this whole experience that I worked on while I was doing this. Okay. So you've got this screen. You're browsing. You're. Let's hope that everything works right in this workflow. And you're in Spotify, yeah, right? Yeah. You're in Spotify. So I've modified Spotify to be all about listening to something and then donating to the thing that you're listening to, okay? So thinking about modifications of existing platforms for social impact. So, okay, so I'm gonna click on this podcast that I've come up with, Giveify, their weekly podcast. All right, so I can see that's their podcast on all their episodes. Now I can go to these filters and I can edit these filters. This is a um, sort of like their current UI system for doing this. Now I've added something myself, okay? I can type what kind of content I wanna be filtering. Say I want the podcast to be about arts education. Click the arts education, all right? Now I've got an opportunity to save it. Now you can see all this content is changing. This is where you don't wanna use lorem ipsum because if you're making a change and you're making it su something super deliberate, you wanna make sure that the content is actually reflecting that change. So I've edited all of these to be like mm. quick, you know, when you're thinking about content, just make it easy. If it's about arts, put arts in the first thing, mm -hmm. right? That just shows that you're thinking about what filters look like, right? Mm -hmm. Then I've got, okay, all these new episodes I've edited. I click one, I listen to it. Right, this is a terminal. This is the same kind of methodology that's currently used, where you click it, this goes green. This little bottom thing comes, comes, you know, to the bottom or whatever. Then I go like this. Mm, well, it's transition. Yep, exactly. So okay, I'm, you know, I'm listening to this, this podcast now. It's pretty clear. The slide up thing is also something that, that Spotify does when it listens to play when you listen to a podcast. Now here's the idea I have. Okay, so I'm listening to this this podcast that's about arts in the classroom. Okay, here 
I've added these ideas that are like, maybe they're breaks in the content that they're talking about, okay? I click on this thing, like if you're scrolling it or whatever. Uh -huh. Now, this is in white instead oh, of in gray. Now I know I can, because this segment is about donating to Rock City Chicago, right? It's all about donating to this thing. I'm interested in it, okay? I'm gonna click that, it pauses the thing, and when I click into it, now I've got this opportunity, obviously I forgot to get the, rid of the borders here, but now I've got this opportunity to donate into this platform, right? So I can see the organization, how long this, you know, this charity or donation part is open for two weeks, description of what they do and amounts of it. This is not a UI frame that they're currently working on, but this is the way that I've done this as a slide up part. Mm -hmm. It's actually super reminiscent of something that like iOS does on the um, app store. You want to look, you want to um, install something. This pop-up comes up when you want to install it. Mm -hmm. That's like, all the information about it. You want to officially make it real. It's following a lot of iOS methodology. Um, now I go, okay, I want to do $10. I see that idea that that change is made. I click on it. I love how the button changed. Yeah, too. really, really subtle. And you know what? That also is the same thing as Spotify's follow thing. When you when you see the follow, mm -hmm. you click it, it, it you know changes the background and foreground colors. Mm -hmm. Super simple way of just showing that you've clicked something and you've made a change. Okay, mm -hmm. now I can send the, send the $10 and then I would be done, right? Sweet. So that's kind of what I worked that's on, right? That's what all the mad typing was. That's what all the mad <laughs> typing was and you know, Doing something like this, obviously, you know, it took like a, an hour and 40 minutes, right? A little bit less. And it's not totally finished, right? Like there are some other things that I would love to to work on with this kind of stuff. But the idea is there. It's mm -hmm. obvious. I've modified something that's existing. It's a great way to like get your hands on on these kind of projects. Yeah. Very cool. And good job of like, again, following all those current and like design methodologies and just, it's well integrated. So. I'm always thinking about that kind of stuff, you know, like how you can incorporate what already exists to make it look, you know, feel very real. Yeah. Right? Because if you're starting a new sort of like paradigm, that's a complicated UI word, but basically you're starting like a new way of thinking about how to do something. Mm hmm it's like it's hard to get that taken off right sometimes using things that are best for that are user centered that have already been established are good ways mm -hmm. to start getting your work out there that make them look really real yeah no that is good yeah fantastic i love it man and you did you knocked out so many screens too by the way <laughs> i'm a screen knocker man I know. That, you know you work fast well let's see what everybody else did i know everybody else has been working yes, like mad it as well I'm excited so we'll just kind of start down at this end so we'll start with the this mental health app by hugo almedia looks like there's three screens and again this is just the challenge tab it's all about health we can check this out hello john we can see who john is uh default message i guess you can add friends and that sort of thing uh your mood today, you're I hope you're not slightly depressed. Yeah. But apparently there's also an, oh, an SOS button. So it brings this up. It's like people to contact, which I think is really huge, by the way. Definitely. This is really awesome. I think that's a cool idea. And I like how the, you know, so the different, you know, the colors are might coincide with like how you feel. I think that's a good way to do it is just like, uh, you know, give me a frowny face or a, a, a dark color for yeah. some of this. Uh, let's see if this is okay. So this is actually we'll go to, actually some of these. This is a new one by Shashank Fitness App. Going full screen on this one. Activities for you. Let's go into my activities. I like the color. Feel free to comment away. Yeah, I do. You know, I like the right. Like something that this person has done, which is nice, is they are sticking true to like simple hierarchy. Things are not super complicated. If they don't need to be gigantic, they're not gigantic, which is really good. You don't want competing text sizes. You don't want stuff that's like, <laughs> Ah, you got my vote. Wait, that's Look hilarious. at that. <laughs> that's one way, that's to, a good pick. one way to butter me up. <laughs> now my only thought is, okay, so we go into my activities or whatever. Something that I found um, in my work is that graphs sometimes that are like, 
this big, this long, it, you know, that are measured out like that, sometimes people just want to see straight numbers. So it's like, yesterday you walked this, this many miles. You don't need to see it in some way that's like making some sort of complex graphic mm -hmm. if, the, if an easy way to see it is in plain text. So that is a suggestion for here, but obviously the graphs are making it look really nice. So sometimes that's a... Yeah. Because yeah. my initial thought was like, oh, this is very pretty, but like, is it is it usable data? Exactly, exactly. And that's yeah. something with UX research, always helps. Well, I think it's absolutely fantastic, but that's partially because he, he, he put me in as awesome. Of course. He's buttering me up. Okay, Colleen, Tracy, let's go on into this one. We gotta pick up the pace, health competition, diving into push-ups. Let's see how many push-ups you can do. Uh, I'm all about it, by the way. Today's battle, one versus 45. Let's kind of click through these. You can see how this actually changes. So they showed a little bit of progression there. Uh, and I like the color scheme, so that's fantastic. And I like the color scheme. <laughs> it, it gets me. Uh, let's take a look at this is, should be, you shy? Oh no. Uh. Well, anyways, let's go. We went through Colleen's, Yashai's here. We have music gym, so you can start. We all like to dance. We want to get in better shape. Music gym, we'll do that. Dancing oh, to different music the, to listen a, to a, while a you're while you're dancing. I like it. Play now. I copy the movements into it. Good job, uh, Farouk. Totally cool. Frozen be an icebreaker, so breaking the ice, diving in, 150 points if you do this challenge. Um, I'm not sh so this is, gets tricky. You could actually add comments to uh, your designs. So if you you could actually describe what's going on in this screen, which would potentially be a good idea. But this is cool. 150 kilometers biking potentially in the snow. Uh, I like this one as well from Christy. Logging, um, sort of diabetes yeah. log. Cool. Viewing the log, we can see how they did. Click on that. Uh, obviously, get your different stats. That's a great transition. Let's make sure. New reading, typing that in. And awesome, Christy. Ivan. Simple S motivator. Nice. Let's do this. Nice. Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, let's schedule it nice. Uh huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Time to run. Time to run. Okay. Beep, beep. Please oh. click repeatedly to sim simulate a strobe. Oh, so what? Oh, okay. Time to run. Da, 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 da. Oh, cool. cool. Okay. Let's go back. Workout. Nice. Time to work, work out. out. God damn. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, and let me just kind of click through these screens. Time to wake up. Again. Da, 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 da. Yeah, nice. Schedule time for yoga. Wow, they you really get effing mindful. They really did it all. They did each one too, which is like the a good amount of work. Yeah, this is these are the most screens yeah. we've seen. There's four. You There's know, a 20. ton of screens. Time to read. So get effing smart. Some whatever. something I like about this one too is that screen beforehand is just so simple. Yeah, it's like that is good. This one right here. Yep. It's all very clean. Yeah. Time to be awesome. And Ivan, was that Ivan's? I say you are pretty awesome. Let me just double check. Yes, Ivan's is awesome. Pablo's, let's shake it up today with some hiking. Great job. Three screens meets the requirement, and we get the idea. Let's dive, dive into Brett. Brett Nation, just flex. Let's get moving. All right, we'll do that right now. I'm not sure if these are linked together. Just your login, customize your workout, and you're good to go. Sam Freeman, brotivate wow. because you can. We're gonna brotivate. Uh -huh. Little boom, push-ups. Okay, there we go. I like send a protein. You can send a protein, um, maybe a protein shake to your friend, but uh, it wins for funniest name. So thank you so much. And again, that's Sam Freeman. Julia, Julia sent hers through a couple different ways. She made actually a Behance page, appreciate that. Diving into this. Um, let's dive into this. Create your garden, name, email, birthday. So you plant a tree. Uh, 
And then you, this is how much you should water it. So I got on water, vegetables, fruits. Meet your daily goals and watch your garden grow. Oh, how interesting. This is interesting. Well, there so basically, so many the, basically what's happening here is like, I don't know if this plant is meant to signify you growing and being more healthy. So I don't know if there's some gamification going on there. And we have this wellness nation that I think we didn't we already go through. Maybe not. Very nice. Calories burned. I think we've seen this before. We have one more, which is Christians. Gym Warrior. Signing up. Signing in. Abs torso. Diving into those workouts. Awesome. Now we gotta pick a winner, and we only have like a couple minutes to do so. Okay. To top it off. Let's do it. So, are you ready for this? I am. I'm always ready, you know? Um, I think, should we start talking about Yeah, let's start okay. talking. I'm kind of clicking my, through these. You know, I, I was eliminating some that I just think, you know, we don't, you know. I think that one of my favorite ones was that one that was like the running, the simple motivator. I think that is one of my favorite ones. Let me... This is cool. Let me actually jump out here because there's two where you guys sent me XD files. So here's Patrick's. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Also using that wire. I love this. Kit. I love this look. Is actually this is kind of hard to read, but this look is kind of standing out a little bit just because it's not a standard, you know, sort of pink, blue color that I see a lot. And Abel, Abdel Bassett. Get ready for your race. That's when you're going, and that's how far you've ran. All right, so you like this one. We have the diabetes one as well. I'm kind of dropping some of these that, uh, the one that was dancing, and then we have some push-ups. Oops. And these were some of them from earlier. Oh yeah, that one was, this was nice. This was a nice one just because it, it was pretty clean and simple. And then this one also had the color scheme. Yeah. Whew. This one, I really, really like the idea about it. Something that I would give advice to for this person is to start with the, or to in integrate the UI kits that make things like that button at the bottom really simple. Modifying text that you know looks right at the bottom button that isn't as big, like usually you want a little bit smaller in some places because mm -hmm. a lot of that text is similar sized. A little bit of hierarchy there will go a yeah. long way in making things look easier to understand. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, okay, so I'm getting these narrowed down to some of the okay, top ones, which would be this one and this one, and then I'm going to pull out one more. Feel free if I missed one, some, let me know. Yeah, them, yep. Let me just check on this one. So this one was, was good, but when you compare it to one where yeah, we had I think 20 more, screens yeah, then. Totally. This one. Yeah. I so these are the three I have. Totally. And really briefly, I can kind of go through what I think about each one. Uh, this one on the right that uh, is like the, all of this, what's it called? Tracker. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. One minute. Okay. All of this <laughs> one on the right, you know, I think that there's like a lot of content there and it's a little bit complicated, but there's a lot of good content. You don't need so many things on the screen though. I think it could be simplified a little bit. This one in the middle, maybe it's a little bit too complicated. What would you do if you know you needed to add more functionality than just like these three buttons? Mm -hmm. I think the reason why my favorite one is the simple motivator one is because it's fresh, it's clean. You know, you can see, imagine like adding more scale, having more buttons here, making it a little bit more, there are more categories, more information. Um, Nice use of hierarchy here. It's like very, very simple. I'm. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I like it too. And I yeah, like the, to and, the point, and, even and it's just fun. The, one of my favorite things is the fill out section where it's the date and time picker. Looks really, really simple, and I can imagine what it would be like to add in more functionality there. So, yeah. Awesome. 
It looks like the Simple Motivator wins. Congratulations. We will contact you. Uh, we will just verify who did this. So let us know if this is yours. Um, I won't bother everybody to click us through all these, but congratulations to our winner, the Simple Motivator. Yay. Actually done by Ivan. That's whose it is. Congratulations, Ivan. We appreciate you. We appreciate all the entries. We can never give them enough time uh, or Natalie enough time, quite frankly. Although you never... You wouldn't know that you'd need more time. You knocked out so many <gasps> screens. And we get to see more tomorrow. <laughs> Yay! Yay! I, I love am, it. Yeah, I'll be on tomorrow, and I'll talk more about the residency and all that good stuff. Yay. Thank you, Natalie. Everybody Thanks. give her a warm. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Crabtree, up next. Stick around with Shays. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Everyone.